With gold and silver buried deep underground, Virginia City, Nevada became one of the biggest mining boom towns in the West. Its population grew overnight from 4,000 in 1862 to over 15,000 a year later. Extracting gold and silver ore from the Comstock load proved challenging. Intricate tunnels and shafts had to be dug and supported by square set timbering. Miners braved the recurrent dangers of fires and flooding, lung disease, falling down shafts, and working in the heat of the mines caused by natural hot springs. A methane fire at the Yellow Jacket mine in 1869 killing 35 miners gave cigar merchant Adolf Sutro an ingenious idea. If he could drill a mostly horizontal shaft from a location four miles away from Virginia City to the Dayton Valley to the southeast, those hot spring waters could be drained and allow for safer and deeper mining. His tunnel would also provide fresh air through a series of vertical air shafts spaced along the way and provide a new way to haul out ore by cars on a track. But such an undertaking would require millions of dollars that he would have to raise. On this episode of History Hunters, Sarah and I tour the site of the famous Sutro Tunnel. But spoiler alert, we get close to the mouth of the tunnel, but not allowed to go in for a very good reason. might find it rather odd that to get to the famous Sutro Tunnel, such a key part of Virginia City and Nevada history, it's pretty odd that you have to enter this modern residential subdivision, but this has encroached upon this historical district. Sarah got excited because as the subdivision ends, there's wild horses out here. No, there was a pony in the neighborhood. And this is, it's really strange how this subdivision ends right here and there's a guy up there waiting for me we are going to the sutro tunnel hi so welcome to this episode of history hunters sarah and i have been invited to visit the sutro tunnels we were here last year there was a gate it was locked we didn't come in but we've been invited back and chris over here has been the generous one to show us around and tell us a little bit about the Sutro Tunnel and all the buildings around here. Um, so when did this tunnel start? Well, Jeff and Sarah, first, thank you guys very much for coming out here. I saw your video in Dayton and I saw the disappointment it looked on your <laughs> yeah. face when you came out here. And I was like, no, I gotta have these guys come back now. For sure. Uh, the Sutro Tunnel started in 1869 by Adolph Sutro as a way to drain the water from the mines of Virginia City, transport good, transport ore, uh, ventilate the mines and be able to give uh, the miners uh, an additional access to escape in case of fire and danger in the mines themselves. Because there was a yellow jacket fire, right? Big yellow jacket fire. That was a Like 30 tragedy. something guys. Yeah, a lot of people died in that one. And that actually helped Adolf Sutro to get his initial seed money to start work on the tunnel was that fire. He spoke at Piper's Opera House and you can hear that speech on our website, his whole speech. And he got everybody fired up and got his initial seed money from the miners themselves to start work on this and how much did it cost him oh boy i can't think of the number off the top of my head but he was into it millions we're talking years. millions and even in 1908 they came back in and did another quarter of a million dollar investment in the tunnel you know most people think that mining ended in 1878 1879 started going downhill technology increased they needed less people so less people were in the community they were still mining like crazy yeah. So what building is this behind us? The building behind us is the old Shoals house from Carson City. Okay. This is the Victorian. A lot of ghost hunters love this one. We're working on fixing this back up. The Shoals were a very important family for the Carson City area. You have the Shoals Ranch that's now the hospital's at. And this building got moved here in the 70s. You can see the foundation is cinder block. Okay. Some of the others, which either don't have a foundation or are just on rock. Why was it moved here? They wanted to have another place out here. There was a lot more houses out here at that time too. In the 1960s, a gentleman named Robin Larson moved out here to take care of the site. And he stayed on through the 70s and ended up going up to Canada. Then there was a guy out here, you may have heard of him, Greg Melton, that was doing a lot of work. And Greg's also an artist. He built the statue of Adolf Sutro that's in downtown Carson City. Okay. We have a miniature of his in our museum. It's by the state capitol, right? Right, right next okay. to the state capitol. Did they move this whole? Yeah, they, that's what people would do back in the day is they would move a house whole from one town to another. Yeah. There was town, there was tons of houses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, they were able to do it. The red house there, that was Rosa Mays from Carson City. Rosa May was the last prostitute of Carson City. Oh, wow. So we still have a lot of research to do on her and that. But she didn't live here. That, no, she, she didn't. That was in that all house. here in the set. Okay. That was somewhere around the Carson Nugget, that one. Gotcha. And uh, a little bit about us, the Friends of Sucho Tunnel. So the Friends of Sucho Tunnel are a nonprofit group. Uh, we're doing two tours a month. We have events. We invite folks like you out here. And we're working on restoring the site. This 28-acre site has been donated to us. When you were out here last, it was still owned by individuals. It was privately owned. Oh, was it? And those people, as a legacy gift, donated this whole site to our nonprofit group, the Friends of Sucho Tunnel. Wow. Yeah. Quite a hefty donation, huh? Incredible. Donation. Well, we're yeah. working on it. It's, it's not necessarily for free. Yeah, we have a lot of goals not. and responsibilities. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So if people want to tour this facility, what's the cost and how do they it's do it? $65 per person. Uh, you can go on our website, go, click on tours or on Ticket Taylor. I think we have four or five tours left for the remainder this year. And we're going to start scheduling the tours for next year. Okay. Our inevitable goal is to be able to make the site safe and open for regular tours be able to walk on like a boaty okay but for now we have to organize it like this for liability insurance and to, right to be able to protect the site but you guys want to go in and take a look oh sure this is not what i expected in here it looks no, like it's a, no, it's a little bit newer than you probably it looks like a newer house so a lot of people look up here even until fairly recently Bill miles and miles construction he lived here at this point and then she got pregnant and decided, well, um, I don't want to live out here anymore. <laughs> I don't blame her. They moved, moved out. And uh, up until, here's an eviction notice from 2007. And I think that was the last person that left you here. That's an eviction notice from 2007. <laughs> and this is another one of the projects. When we have this place done, then it'll be part of the venue. We're going to have a wedding here in October. But this will be a nice place. It's a... Uh, for brides to come out to. We'll be able to rent this out. Yeah, there. Yeah. That's a. Or, like, what is it when we go on our zoo trips and we stay on the property and we just kind of glam? This yeah. is just a. This is just a go back in time version. Yeah, we would do something like that. How did he make his riches? Primarily after he sold here, so he made. It was around nine hundred something thousand dollars in that time when he sold his stocks in eighteen seventy nine. He did stay on as the primary um, board member uh -huh. in, until his death. His younger brother Theodore Sucho took over management of the site after Adolf had left. But then he took all that money. Adolf went to San Francisco, did the Sucho Bass, the tunnel that's there, bought up most of the city, gave a, gave away a lot of stuff, and then became mayor. Yeah, and became mayor. Yeah. <laughs> He thought that was one of the worst decisions he ever made was becoming mayor because he was so late in life. But he, he, he always wanted to get into politics. He tried getting into Nevada politics against William Sharon. And there was a big coup. He tried to uh, steamroll Sharon at the Ornsby House. And it's, it's coup to overthrow him, and it worked against him. So Adolf never came to Nevada again after that. What is this building? This is the old carriage house. Did they treat lumber by burning it? or is It's that oil. Yeah, why did, I always wondered why it looked burnt. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, you had to take care of it somehow. And you can see a lot of the old buildings that at this age or even younger, they're just falling apart. Yeah, because they had, they had to oil it. They had to oil it. And that's what we're doing out here is we're trying to be as authentic as possible. Did I hear a burrow? Uh, no burrows out here, but you do have horses. Oh, okay. One of the neighbors might have one. So this is the building that I'm hoping to uh, turn into our welcome center when you drive up. There's a lot of work left. Just up to a couple weeks ago, there was... Oh, the brick flooring. Yeah, look at this. But there was dead pigeons, and, and it was nasty in here. We've still got lots of work to do, but the clampers and our volunteers are working on fixing it up. One of the many projects. Clampers help you out, huh? What's that? No. Clampers help you out? Clampers, well, clampers are great. And, yeah. Yeah. So you can see, here's the old trough. Uh, a guy named Hans, I can't remember his last name, he moved out here in the 60s, and he is the one that converted this from the carriage house to his home, and he lived here back then. Oh, gosh. He's riding on it. You see that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. What are we looking at? The, the signage as oh. yeah. the wall. What's the, oh, it's a Sutro. Sutro tunnel, and yeah, this is 
signs that he had found out here, they used to put that up in the 60s, and then somebody else came out, and other people have lived here since then, too. Wow. A so, lot of people were living at the site even up through the 90s. So how old is this place? This is one of the original buildings from the late 1800s. Wow. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly the date on it yet. I still have to do a lot of research on this building, but this is one of the original buildings. Cool. Yeah. Got the stove pipe going up. How cold does it get here in the winter? Oh, it gets pretty cold. <laughs> it's a high desert, so even in the uh, summer, it gets really sick. chilly at night out here. But snow-wise. <laughs> oh, we don't get a lot of snow on this side. Yeah. <laughs> It does get cold, but it also gets hot. It, we do get a lot of wind, but the snow, not much at all. Yeah, I can live without snow. Yeah. Now, if you go up to Virginia City, they get quite a bit more snow than we do down there. Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's not the natural soil. This is all from the Sutro Tunnel. The raised ground that fanned out at the mouth of the Sutro Tunnel was an accumulation of dirt and rock debris carved out from the four-mile tunnel and vertical shafts over a nine-year period. You can plainly see from this early photo that the ground around the site at the inception of the drilling of the tunnel was not yet as expansive as today. Right. All this, yeah. Yeah, well, you think four miles of dirt is going to have to come out some somewhere. somewhere. Did they start the tunnel here? Yep. They it's did. Just right around the corner, you'll be able to see where they started. That's where Sutro did his first blast of dynamite. Yeah, well, his first pick strike on October 19th. I mean, really, they had been working on it for several days, preparing the site, and the commencement date officially was October 19th. Okay. This is a predecessor to the water pumps. This is a water bucket. Gosh. They would lower it down into the mine. This plunger would come up. The whole thing would fill with water. And when they lifted it, the plunger would suck back down. They pull it back up to ground level, set it down, and the bottom would push up, and the water would pour out. <laughs> Constantly doing that all day long to empty the water out of the mines. Wow! Until they invented the pumps and then the tunnel. That must have been horrible work. Horrible. Yeah. I mean, think about. It. No wonder people died young. Yeah, they they were working too hard. You know? These are pollen wheels. Uh, this might actually be a knight's wheel. That one for sure is a Pelton wheel. 1888 is the date on this. These are how they generated DC electricity wow. in the late 1800s. They had electricity here at the Sutro site. Isn't that incredible? But yeah, there's big, big cups, and it didn't take that much water pressure. At that time, though, they were getting 4 million gallons of water per day out there. So they were able to really spin these. And then um, in 1941, that's what the West family says, what caused the fire at the mansion, is dad rehooked up one of the old Pelton wheels so they could have electricity, and it failed. <laughs> that's according to the Francis West. These are all parts of the stamp mill that burned down. That little area that turns in is where the stamp mill originally was at, and that burned down in the 70s. This would be as a grizzly. What they would do is you'd have some big rocks and you'd smash them and filter them and get them smaller and smaller as you could until they got to the stamps and they turn it to powder and then it would process through the rest of the mill. Our mill here was a cyanide mill. So they would use primarily two forms of chemicals to separate the silver from the ore and that was uh, mercury first, which is why we're all a, we're a super fun site now. Everything out here is mercury in it. Don't eat the fish in the river. But at Sutro, they use cyanide. Cyanide was more efficient and less dangerous. If you can imagine cyanide being less dangerous than mercury, but it was, yeah. You can see how hot that fire got. It was able to bend this huge iron arm. This would turn, or go into here, and this big plate would crush that ore. Sarah was telling some coworkers that they were gonna, we were gonna visit a mine. So technically, is it a mine? It's not a mine. It is a drainage addit, and it had a stamp mill. So their goal wasn't necessarily mining. I mean, they always hoped if they ran into a lot of silver, they, they would mine it, but they never did. It was mostly meant to drain water from the other mines and transport ore from Virginia City through the tunnel to the stamp mill here and the other stamp mills along the Parson River. The mining was a byproduct of their main mission. Yes, but they did that here as well, huh? Yeah, not necessarily mining. They did well, they did they ore mined, processing. They processed what they Well, yeah, they processed the ore. Right? But, but then the they... Form of uh, mining, right? 
I, I suppose, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> obviously you're trying to get what out of the ore? Gold? Silver. Silver. Yeah, at first it was gold around here. Gold, uh, Dayton was the first place they actually come from okay. in this area. And then they were getting this other rock in this way, this dark clay, nasty rock they kept throwing over their shoulders okay. into a gully. And they had that assayed. Turned out that was silver. High grade silver. And they're like, oh. Uh, you know, there's some we'll keep it. stuff here. And they, I mean, this is what built San Francisco in and, and the West after the 1800s and early 1900s was the mining that was done around here. This is what would uh, turn the stamps. Oh, okay. So every, all the crushers, this was the big engine that ran the mill. Do you it was have a smaller mill. It was only a 10 stamp mill that was here. They said in one of the reports I read that they were going to build a 100 stamp mill. I don't know if that ever actually happened or not, but the 10 stamp mill burnt in the 70s. Okay. And that's what all this is from. I was fascinated to learn that Sutro established a town in his name on this flat just below the mouth of the tunnel. Nothing exists of it today. An estimated 600 to 800 people lived here, and the town boasted a church, post office, businesses, and a weekly newspaper. Its post office operated from about 1872 until 1920. According to Francis West, who grew up in the area, the town had graves of two men who died during construction of the tunnel. Also on this site was the stamp mill until a fire wiped it out in 1967. These pieces of equipment were used in the mill and were salvaged from the fire. This is really fun and dangerous as hell. That is a, what's called a hit and miss engine. And that was a mill. So there was a belt that went across and it would turn that blade. I wonder how many arms were lost to that. <laughs> if you're careful. An old swimming pool from the 60s. Yeah, there was a house here that burnt down. Great Melton lived in it. That one burnt down just in the oh, so house. Was the basement initially? No, the house was oh. there. This they dug and they had water running to it from the tunnel. And that was the swimming pool. <laughs> the swimming pool. Yeah. Oh, well, whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah, it gets hot here. You gotta cool off. That's the warehouse. Uh, that's where they had the Super Saloon in the 60s. Uh, You're talking 1860s? 1960s. Oh, wow. And there's the Sutro Tunnel we're gonna take a look at. And then the 1800s, that, that is the original building to the site. That's where they would store material and they had the offices for the uh, superintendent was in there so is this how they got the dirt out of the hole that's right the wow carts. the ore carts if you look at the wheels a lot of these are original wheels from the 1800s made in carson city uh, this is a, a later one that's 1910. vnt foundry carson the foundry of Carson BNT. City. Is that like the... Virginia Truckee? Virginia Truckee foundry in Carson. So these are native. I mean, these are vintage. Yeah, these are original uh, 1910s and older. Uh, these ore carts are huge compared to a lot of them that you'll see at mines because they needed to be bigger because of the tunnel to be able to transport that ore out. Ah. And or they would drop it down from the mines into these and then pull the ore out from the tunnel. The tunnel found other uses as well, such as when the harsh winter of 1890 blocked travel and the delivery of food to Virginia City. It is said that eight tons of potatoes were shipped through the tunnel and hoisted up the CNC mine shaft to feed the town. These are really, these are electric mules. We're talking 1907 electric. Wouldn't that be cool to drive? Ore carts, yeah, for our uh, mules. Wow. These could tow, look at that engine, copper on the wood. Oh, up here? No, oh, this is the engine block. Right here. This. right here, see this is wood and this is copper. Okay. Electric motor. Don't tell the thieves, huh? Yeah. Yep, We're pretty secure out here. Looks like it's seen its better days, huh? It has. It, it is a long-term hope to get one of these two running. Uh, this one's really awesome. These it, are Edison batteries. Is this a seed here? No. Yeah. So it's, it's all flipped around right now, but yeah, that's this is where you would have sat. Here's your brake control. You can see how it would have pressed on the brake. And then these are uh, Edison batteries. Work in progress. Edison batteries, man, that's cool. And even on the top, you can see it where it says Edison. You've been in right, and we cleared that up. I have one. 
Uh, water? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so. Thanks. So, what do you know about the visit of Ulysses S. Grant? Did he st did he visit this location and did he go back into Virginia City through that entire yeah, time? Yeah, yeah. Ulysses S. Grant came out here. There's a big pomp and circumstance, huge party. He stayed at the Sutro Mansion when was hosted by Leia Sutro. He gave a speech on the front porch. He had left the mansion, went into the tunnel with his friends and family. They went from here to the Savage Mine, up the Savage Mine into Virginia City. And he said it's one of the worst experiences of his life. It's hot, it's muggy, there's water. It's just a horrible environment back there, but it gave him a newfound understanding of the daily lives of the miners. And he was ex-president at the time. He came out in 18, I believe it was 1879. I can't imagine how dark it would have been back there. Oh, they, they have candles, but that was their only form of light. And Julia Dent, his wife was there, right? That's right, yeah. <laughs> a lot more keys on it, so you could type out a lot easier than the standard Morse code. That is so cool. Yeah. And the tunnel's right out there. Yeah, let's go check it out. Now, I've gone back in there just, just a little bit, and the sunlight, just, just going back in, few yards and coming out your, your eyes are they're just it's just painfully bright out here. you see some of the older photos you would see the collapse right here in the beginning we've cleared that all out and there's the water coming out there's a lot of still can happen the water's still running today we're at about like 30 gallons per minute it was coming out at four million gallons wow yeah pretty good And there it is. Collapsed. Oh my gosh, that's so dangerous. Yeah, we're fixing it, though. We're going to do the timbers the, the way Adolf Sutro originally designed it. It's going to be like an octagon shape almost, but half, half an octagon. And timber along the side, and backfill that with concrete, and then go in 10 foot sections. Uh, rebuilding and going further back and far as we can and then we'll be able to go inside of here and do tours in the tunnel itself wow and at the point right now it's not safe yet i wouldn't want to go in there i've been skydiving i've been hang gliding i'm not afraid of heights but that creates anxiety <laughs> that creates, like no <laughs> hey, how far back have you gone Oh, just, there. there's a few timbers that are still up back there uh, for engineering research. We went back there and took a look with proper safety people on site, and we made it back maybe 100 feet or so before we decided it was not safe to proceed without more safety equipment. We're working on a cage system, so as we clear debris, there'll be a cage system so you can be inside of it as you're working your way back. <clears throat> We did send a drone back there. Did you see that? Yeah. You, yeah. Did you have a light on it? Yeah, it had a light. Uh, it also had LiDAR and 3D rendering. We have it all in cloud compare. And we mapped out. That drone made it back 500 feet. Uh, no, I was just remarking on underground drones. Drones are yeah. a thing. They are. This I mean, is the uh, original building. This is the candle building I was telling you about that the kids would work in. And they'd make candles. For the workers and the mules. Ah. Help yourself. That's a blast cabinet. The dynamite storage building is up the hill a little ways. You didn't want to have dynamite storage too close to a lot of people. So there it is, the Sutro Tunnel. I've been wanting to come here probably for 20 years or so, ever since I saw pictures of it. That's so cool. They would keep ice, just pounds and pounds, hundreds of pounds of ice here. And they would give it to the miners because they would get too hot. And they would cool down the miners and cool down the mules. And there's other ice storage areas throughout the distance of the tunnel. But this was where the original exterior ice storage was. Ice house, huh? Ice house. If you look down there, you can see the boards. This is all caved in, but this was the ice house. I was going to ask about this because it looks like there was another yep. cave in. Now, I have to ask, where did they get the ice? I have no idea. Uh, I heard that sometimes in the wintertime they would 
take it from the lakes and cut it up and then store it somehow. And it lasted all the way through summertime. Yeah, they would have had to, or maybe Tahoe even. But not down here. This lake never freezes. That water stays too warm. And what is that lake? That's the water from the tunnel. Okay. We'll head over there on our way up to the mansion. You disappointed we can't go in? No, I don't want to go in there. <laughs> no. To think that Grant entered this tunnel and went back, this blows me away. He's like the... Oh, and even then, that, no. He, he rode all the way to Virginia City, he was explaining to me. With his wife on their little cart. Brave, brave wife. <laughs> <laughs> and then they went up an elevator shaft through the Savage into Virginia City. So we're going to go up to where the Suto Mansion was. The mansion burned down. Or did it burn down? Burned down, 1940. But burned down in 42. President Grant stayed here, but the foundation of the building is still here. We're going to head up the hill and he's going to show us where it was. And all of this water is water from the tunnel. We have fish and ducks. And You'll see geese out here sometimes, a lot of wildlife, it's pretty neat. So all this water came out of the Sucho Tunnel, it's still draining. Beautiful lake here though. I can see why the birds like it. Well, those bud hens stay drinking year round. No mallards. Sometimes the mallards come in, but we've never had things stay. And there's huge toads. They're not toads, frogs. So we eat off sutro. Okay, these are really strange looking frogs. I've never seen frogs that look like this with that green head and the black body. But eat off sutro had frogs brought in to this site. There's a big guy right here. So, oh, the frog legs. Yeah, you see that? Like yeah. Oh, he just went down. Foundation. You can see another one of the dead man's up there. They had heating, uh, they had gas, they had uh, hot water here, and uh, later uh, in the 1940s they had electricity from the, when the West family lived here. So yeah, help yourself. So would they, where would the front have been, right? This here? Is the front, right here is where President Grant stood and gave his speech. Wow. This is the front steps. <laughs> Imagine hundreds of people standing here to hear him speak. Crazy. Singing songs and had a, uh, a band here. And so it looks like maybe some of the rocks have shifted off the foundation a little bit. Yeah. I mean, just from time. Time and people. people I mean, we still find stuff and we try and save it, but we, this hasn't been one of the big projects yet. Eventually, we hope to come out here and dig it all up, do a big archaeological dig and see what's in here. Presumably a nail from the house? Yeah. What about this uh, metal thing up here? Yeah, that would have been uh, probably the oil for the furnace. Oil for the furnace? Yes, for, for the house. For the house. And there's a pipe right here. Oh yeah, that's probably piped from the oil. Here's the west wall, west wall foundation for the house. So we've been standing right where the house is. Yeah. What is that? Mm -hmm. I think the kitchen was right around here. And they would have had a big dining room and a smoking parlor and then bedrooms upstairs. Wow. Yeah. See those now, pipes they run back here. Did they have an outhouse or was it an indoor plumbing? I read that they did have plumbing, but it would make sense that there should have been an outhouse around somewhere. Well, too. you know what? This had to have been the chimney where the chimney was. Huh? Uh, there I was two. They were on either side. And the chimney caps are down at by the warehouse. So there would have been a chimney there and a chimney there. There's a lot, like a lot of ash here too. Yeah, left over from that fire. And there's also a something metal cabinet here. It's full. Looks like a tub. Tub? Would have been a tub of some sort. This would have been a window weight. They had massive weights, counterweights. So when you'd open up the windows, these counterweights would go down. That's a counterweight to the it's window? A counterweight to a window. Feel like Golly. It. Oh. It's a little hot right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really. But they had to be able to open and close the windows. Wow. And hey, look. Dishes. 
Or, yeah. No? Yeah. It looks like electrical. electrical. Maybe. Maybe electrical. You'll see pieces of cups and plates out here. Down on the other end of the hill, there, somebody had a huge tea set that's just shattered all over the place. Wow. That's a shame. If you really need to rebuild it one day, but that'd be, hopefully we can get enough attention yeah. and sell enough tickets to tours and donors and we will. But until then, this is what we have. So I have to explain about these metal pipes that are in the ground. They're called Dead Man. From there, they had wires attached to the house because apparently the Washu Zephyr, the high winds that come through here, they were afraid would blow the house over. Those pipes, if you notice, are drilled at an angle because the house was down, right down there where Chris is standing and uh, there's three up here all angled away from the house. Now from these apparently the cables were attached to the house. I, I can't understand how that would keep the house from blowing over but it seems kind of hokey. That house hosted Ulysses S. Grant, former president of the United States and his wife, first lady Julia Dent Grant. So the history here is just incredible. Now if I were guessing I would say that piece of metal there is kind of the goes uh, goes around the flue as it goes through the ceiling of the house. With almost certainty, these bricks are bricks that were in the fireplace, Sutro's fireplace. Crazy to think, man. I mean, this could have been in the mantle that President Grant warmed himself by. The time that he stayed here. So did Sutro ever live in it? Oh, sure, yeah. Sutro okay. lived in it back when it was originally built. Uh -huh. He wasn't there as much as his wife and kids were, though. Part of the reason he left is uh, Leah, his wife, caught him with another gal in Virginia City. Oh, really? And she had to host the ex-president, Ulysses Grant, and send him through the tunnel and had a big party for him here on her own because Adolf wasn't allowed back home yet. And he was still in trouble. And then while uh, Ulysses was going through the tunnel with his whole group, she left and went back to San Francisco that day. Yeah. I left some piece of pink glass somewhere that has a T and a Z on it. Put lettering. Look at this. It says, I think it said Carnegie. Oh, that could have. Oh, here. Look. Is that the other half? Well, it shows C A R. Oh, there you go, Carnegie. Carnegie. But why did Carnegie make bricks? Huh. Oh, here. That one too. Uh, yeah, I've never really done much exploring around here. That looks like it was just a barn or something. Yeah. Well, you see the metal from the, uh, the tins that are like coffee cans. Yeah. They would you see that? You yeah. see that in Bodie? They used it for yeah. siding. It's just so eerie to be standing here to to know that there was a millionaire's mansion here and the president of the United States giving a speech. And time destroys everything. So something I need to point out is the fact that the road leading to the Sutro Mansion was right here. You can only see faint traces of it. The time has also eliminated that pretty much. So he would have taken the buggy right up this rough road. It must have been a really rough ride. Our president and Julia Grant would have come up this way as well, right through here all the way up to the Sutro Mansion, which was up there. A lot of you folks like me to superimpose things, so here you go. Eerie hell, it's all gone. So we got Asa here. Asa, what's your last name? Gilmore. Gilmore, okay, you're a caretaker here. Now you're gonna tell me about a um, historical item here that's high tech back in the day that allowed them to drill that tunnel straight back right yeah so the whole sutro tunnel is really a marvel of 1800s engineering uh adolf sutro picked the site of the tunnel entrance and uh, sent out a surveyor to confirm the measurements then the surveyor came back and said oh you know mr sutro that's that's great you were off a couple of feet but you were really close sutro said no you don't you better go double check your calculations. So we came back and said, oh no, you actually picked the spot exactly. So Sutro really knew what he was doing. 
Um, and he planned out exactly how this tunnel was going to go back in and intersect with the bottom of the Savage Mine Shift. And he had already planned out the north and south laterals to run, but he knew that he needed to go from this point in a straight line back, 3.88 miles, and that that would intersect with the bottom of the Savage. What we have here is the mound that they used for the theodolite, which was the surveying instrument they used to keep the tunnel in a perfectly straight line all the way back to Virginia City. And in our museum, I can show you a picture of it, but uh, it, this is where they took all of the surveying measurements to keep that tunnel in line and with enough fall to keep the water rolling out because it the tunnel does rise slightly all the way through it. So this had to be set perfectly. Yeah. How do they do that? <laughs> uh, well, they, that, that would have been the, the surveyors. Uh, they, they picked the spot for it. This would have been somewhere between 1865 and 1869 that they actually put that in place. Dang. And it's still there. Yeah. That's where all the mules were, huh? Now what is that? Court samples? Yep, those are court samples. Wow. And what would they do with those? Oh, they would have gone to the... Yeah. <laughs> they would have gone to BS. They'd... So that's rock? Yeah. Yeah, wow. So uh, the mules out here, that, that's an interesting story. You know why uh, they use mules instead of horses? Because mules are not Stronger? scared. Not, like... not stronger and... Scared, yeah, partly. It's a more even temperament, but the real reason is that a horse would get spooked in the mines, and it would rear up, and it would hit its head on the ceiling and knock itself out cold. Oh, for height purposes. <laughs> well, height purposes too, but but it was more the, the rearing up thing, right? Okay. The mule might get spooked at first, but it was pretty docile about it. Definitely didn't rear up and hit its head, and it would get used to the dark and... Uh, the mules in the tunnel, actually, they had those ventilation shafts that I mentioned earlier, and the mules knew where those shafts were, and they would, like, you know, kind of slow down around them. And the, that, Yeah, that, they, well, they, they knew that that was where they got fresh air. Um, there was an ice house right by the tunnel entrance. He showed so, us that? Yeah, so the mules got, they, they had, uh, you know, some teenagers, their job was to give the mules and the miners, for that matter, their ration of ice when they came in and out of the tunnel. Uh -huh. And uh, the mules actually wore an eye patch over one eye. That way they'd be able to go into the tunnel and they take the eye patch off and they've got the one eye that's already acclimated to the dark and they aren't stumbling around once they're right inside. So what is this building here? This is the warehouse. The warehouse. What do they keep in it? Uh, well, so part of the tunnel's purpose was not just ventilation and not just uh, water removal from the mines. It was also transport of people and stuff back and forth from Virginia City to here. So, the warehouse would have done a lot of that. Come on in. So this is another building that we've done a lot of restoration to. There were a couple of apartments built in here, uh, starting in the 60s and 70s. And uh, in the 60s, there was a, a saloon in here. Pierce gets pissed off when I call it a bar. He's like, no, this was a saloon. Oh. Anyway, the, the, the bar itself, though, went right along that wall, kind of where the, where the stove is. Yeah, and uh, those those hard, table over those there. hard-working guys needed a drink, right? Huh? Um, but what what we've tried to do here is get the building back to what it was in the 1800s. A lot of that was even just figuring out things like where the staircase went. So the staircase was kind of a mystery for us for a while. Going back through these old photos, you can see the outline on the wall over here. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, it was there at one point when we first started volunteering here. It was set up coming down here. And then we finally found the oldest photo that we can find has the staircase in here. So that's where we're, that's where we're putting it. <laughs> well, we're really lucky to have a good core group of volunteers. So all of the labor to restore this, this building has been 100% donated to this point. I've got pictures of it when it was a saloon in the 1960s also. Um, yeah. I, I can get you some. Oh, it's just like a hippie colony out here. It, it really was. So, <laughs> like, uh, like the Mansons. <laughs> it, so there was the saloon here. There was an, two apartments in there. Greg Melton lived in the house over here. They had the swimming pool there. There was a uh, family in the Victorian. There was another house over there by the museum. So yeah, there, there was a whole little community out here. Those were kind of wild days. By all accounts. <laughs> oh yeah. What is this building? This is the wood shop. Wood shop. 
And is it old? This is original to the site. Basically. You got a little display here. Well, we're we're moving stuff around. This is is um, this actually goes with that statue that's in the museum, but we're moving a lot of the stuff from that era over into here and kind of expanding the museum. So that's that's in flux at the moment. Interesting. Sure smells old. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some prehistoric washing machines that your great grandmother used, probably. On the porch of this building here. It's pretty cool. So, in the last couple of minutes, the Washu Zephyr winds that are notorious in the Virginia City area have kicked up and almost pushed me over on a number of occasions but i think we're going to wrap up this visit to the historic and very famous sutro tunnel always wanted to be here now i can say i've been here and now you can say you've been here because we showed you this place now you could also check out the website and come here yourself they do offer tours here but we would love to hear your comments about what you saw on this tour we'd also love for you to hit the notification bell and also give us a thumbs up that will help us promote our channel to other people who are interested in history. Thank you so much. as we travel out back through the subdivision that we came through, close to the Sutro Tunnel, we come upon this site. It's the Sutro Elementary School. What a fitting name. <laughs>